So uh, our closing message to all of you will be um, what an incredible time to be alive. And we have to be a little careful saying things like that because that can greatly irritate those of you who think that you are in a doomed planet and a planet where so much is bad. Well, we would ask you, who trained you to only see the negative? And are you going to undo that training? Uh, the negative exists. It's here. It's the lowest end of the energy spectrum. We're not judging or telling any of you off, but we are hopefully shaking you by the shoulders and reminding you that light is here. You are here. Love is here. And if you do not see enough of what you want to see in this world and you do not feel enough of what you want to feel in this world, maybe you are going to be one of the ambassadors of creating and curating that. I'm going to speak from the heart for a minute. I know that if this episode landed in your life right now, there was a higher reason for it. And there is some information embedded within this episode that you need to hear and more so your soul needs to hear. A lot of the frequency that's embedded in this conversation is coming from very higher dimensional realms. And let me explain. Lee Harris is a globally acclaimed energy intuitive channeler, musician, truly a multidimensional human being that is living out his highest creative expression. He offers grounded, practical teachings that help conscious, sensitive individuals heal, thrive, and live a better life. In his 20s, Lee Harris encountered a profound spiritual awakening and an experience that altered his mind forever, literally. A collective energy family known as the Z's of the ninth dimension began channeling through Lee. From then on, Lee has found himself as a healer. He's been providing energy updates on taking the pulse of the consciousness of the world and providing practical tools to elevate ourselves. His channeled book, Energy Speaks, instantly became a bestseller and now he's on a mission to provide a series of books called Conversations with the Z's, which are mind-blowing interactions between Lee's guides and Diana Edwards, a psychoanalyst, which traverses the realms of death, of the new human soul print that is emerging in the planet. These are some of the deepest concepts and most human concepts that we can understand and unpack so we can apply them into our lives. This work goes so deep and speaking from my heart, this was a conversation where at the end we were able to welcome the Z's onto the show and they said some really profound things. I've showed this episode previously to some of my closer friends and it impacted them in wild ways. And my intention for you is to stay with an open mind. I know these are concepts. I know these are ideas that, you know, can really challenge the logical side of our brain. But these podcasts are really energetic frequencies that we can just take in, sometimes even passively. They will impact us they will alter the way that we see the world and they are like those red pills from the matrix that awaken you to a new reality also the information will integrate easier if you remain with an open heart so my wish for you is to enjoy this episode with lee harris and to truly begin to make some bigger questions in your life and start seeing ways in which you can be a transmission of more love and light into this world and truly step into this higher purpose that your soul already knows deep within it. And I hope this episode helps to unlock some of those keys and truly bring out the best version of you. So give it up for a mind-blowing conversation with Lee Harris. Lee Harris, welcome to the podcast, brother. What are you most excited about right now in your life? Right now, uh, we just bought an apartment in England right near my family. So we have okay. a second home in the country I'm from, and that has been lighting me up. So uh, we're going to be going there in a month, so I can't wait. Amazing. And, you, and you've been spending time in Malibu for a while, that West Coast energy. <laughs> Yeah, we lived mm. in Malibu for, I think, 
four, four and a half years, and we then moved into the Santa Monica Mountains. So now mm. we're in, in the Santa Monica Mountains, just outside LA. So we're in deep mountain energy here. So it's very, Beautiful. it really holds us, which is fantastic. I love that. And, you know, just to start diving into it, I think we're going to go very nonlinear and deep into this conversation. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I've been tuning into with the Z's, the guides that you channel, um, they talk about this era of higher harmonics that is going on in the planet right now. We're going to be seeing, as they say, in 2024, 2030, these sort of portal years, uh, gateway years that are going to be happening for humanity. And I just wanted to take this quick energetic pulse from you uh, based on what is going on in the world right now. What are we experiencing? And, and truly, what is this awakening of consciousness that humanity is going through right now? Well, I can share a couple of the things that they've explained as to how we experience it. So one of the things which I think many of us can relate to is the speed. So everything is far faster than it used to be. And we can certainly look at how many changes are happening in the world at seemingly warp speed. Some great changes, some challenging changes, some really difficult things. But I think as it relates to how we experience ourselves, our thoughts, our emotions, our patterns, our healing, I think most of us can attest that these days you seem to be able to go through things 10 times faster than many of us remember going through them a decade ago. So I know for younger, you know, younger people at the moment, say if you're, you know, 20 or early 20s, you might not have such a tracking system around that because of course when you're 10 or 12 or 14 you're really a very different person mm -hmm. so i always think the 20s is like the beginning of adulthood it's like figuring out who we are what we are you're in that it's a beautiful time but i also think it's a really challenging time like i found the 20s like a roller coaster as i was trying to figure out who i was but you add to that the consciousness energy right now that is literally moving through us and it pushes out things that are no longer going to serve you. So that can look like really getting in touch with feelings that don't feel good to you. So for example, let's say you have a relationship to jealousy that might be really in your face right now so that you can get to the bottom of when did this jealousy develop and why did you think jealousy was the solution to what you wanted? And another thing that's really important, and this is one of the things the Z's really taught me, they say nothing is really just your own. So anything that we're going through or thinking that we perceive as negative. So let's say you, you're a very judgmental person and you know that about yourself and you think, I'd like to be a bit less judgmental. Ask yourself, who did you inherit it from? Or are you around groups or a family or a place where that seems to be the currency, that seems to be the way of operating? Or did you develop it as a defense because of things you experienced? So I think in the self-help world when I was growing up, and I'm 46 now, there was a bit of a tendency to uh, be hard on yourself when something came up and, and make it all about you and what you needed to get over. What I like about the Z's is they say, well, you're all walking into collective consciousness and that involves collective judgment, collective fear, collective anxiety, and you all swim in that ocean together. But the big thing that they talk about right now is we are being asked to shed. And as we shed and transform, whether you want to call them lower energies, lower thoughts, lower emotions, we come back to our soul and we get that energy back. It's not that we have to get rid of it, it's that we get to transform it and it becomes new life force for us. So in amidst people feeling very inspired and perhaps higher than they used to experiencing, and lots of people having more intuitive experiences than they've ever had, we have this really deep healing wave that's moving through all of us and we're all you know, going through it in our own way at our own pace. Yeah. And you talked about the the twenties, which uh, you know, right now, for some of our younger listeners, I, I also turned twenty four in July, and something happened to you around twenty three that I would love to start getting into. All of a sudden, 
um, you started unlocking this, these abilities within you and you started communicating interdimensionally with a group of entities that we later called the Z's, uh, a group of 88 entities. And they started speaking to you from your upper left, uh, about two feet above you or whatever the distance is. Uh, but you started hearing a voice and at first you thought you were going schizophrenic. And I think for a lot of channelers, that's the, that's the initiating like feeling of, am I going crazy? But the advice that you were getting was really good advice. So I just wanted to explore that experience for someone that's in their 20s. What is it like to have sort of these guides with you and giving you sort of higher dimensional, higher wisdom, uh, allowing you to guide yourself through through the difficulties, the adversities of life? What was that like? Amazing. And even just this morning, I, you know, was channel writing for myself because of something that came up for me in the last few days that I was moving through and tracking as I was going through it. And then this morning I was like, okay, I think I've moved enough of this. I'm now going to see if I can get the, the overview. And it was so <laughs> helpful. And, and that hasn't changed in 23 years. Um, there were a couple of things. And the thing that I always tell people, by the way, great research. You really, uh, you, you, you know my story well. Um, I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> the thing I always tell people that was never in question for me was that they felt like home. And it wasn't just that their information was so crystal clear and useful. It was that they felt like home, even though at first I couldn't. It was like reconnecting with an old friend. You know how when you meet someone and you you don't know them, but you know them and you feel that. So it's new and you're still figuring out the relationship dynamic, but some part of you knows that they are true to you and you are true to them. It, it was like that. Um, my biggest concern, it took me a couple of days to, to kind of go, well, if this is multiple personality disorder, then it's useful. So I'll, I'll, keep it, <laughs> I'll, you know? I'll, I'll stay with it. I'll stay with it. <laughs> <laughs> They're not telling me to do destructive mm. things. They're actually mm. helping me improve my life. So maybe I got really lucky. Um, but, but what was really the bigger issue for me at the time was what other people would think. So I kept it very private and I would just go home every day and I would write down everything that they would tell me in response to questions I would pose. So I'd write the question and then I'd receive the answer. And if I could share one thing now that I perhaps didn't fully know then, but I, I now teach people who are wanting to channel themselves, is your information from your guides is something you should always consider, but never something you should assume you should do. I think sometimes maybe your generation is probably, you're probably a step further removed from some of the conditioning and programming we had. But there was a tendency when I was younger that anything spiritual, because we thought we didn't know anything about it. And this was before the internet. So, you know, we had books, we had workshops. Because we'd been so separated from spirit, we had a tendency to pedestal a spiritual teacher you know, the guru trap where you you see them as the doorway to your spirituality. You forget that really they're just a conductor. Yeah. You know, you don't make the conductor better than the orchestra because without the orchestra, the conductor has no job. Yeah. But we had this slightly pedestalling tendency in my generation because that's what we learned. And I think church, certain religious organization had taught us separation from spirit and human. So I always advise... Be careful about willingly doing what your guide said, even if you're uncomfortable about it. There should be a period where you really study what they're saying. And they're going to give you pointers. And in a way, they're going to suggest new GPS routes for you. They're going to say, you're going this way, but we think you should go left. If you are deeply uncomfortable about going left and you can't do it, don't do it. That opportunity will come around again. And maybe there's something in you that needs to move. But I've seen a lot of people give their power away to their guides and especially those of us who perhaps have been in imbalanced relationships. I'm like many people I had, uh, I really had to figure out who I was and what my boundaries were and own myself. So I manifested several intimate relationships and a few friendships that were really out of balance. Um, and, you know, you might call it a toxic relationship. I would call it a toxic dynamic. Because I think sometimes when you point the finger at the other person and make them the villain, 
you don't recognize that the only reason they're able to push you around or pull you around is because some part of you thinks that's okay or needs to heal that. So it's like the power the shifts that go on in relationships, which is an, is a theme for humanity right now. These, totally. these energy power dynamics that are going on. Totally. So that, that's one piece of advice I would give. But the more you can write down what you're getting, the more you can kind of stand back and study. And so for me, it was easy because I had months and months of things that they were telling me that I just wasn't seeing. But as soon as they told me, I would see it and it would change the way I operated and it would give me more harmony. So that was the key. Yeah. And, and as the Z's say, awareness is that precursor to change. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to get into this interdimensional communication. Obviously, the Z's have told us they're, that they're coming in from anywhere between the ninth dimension to the 12th dimension. Um, obviously, channeling, communicating through you in form. Um, and right now, I feel like a lot of people are awakening these abilities of, of, of channeling and being able to communicate with other interdimensionals. There's like sort of this need for it right now. I think humanity is at a, is at a point where, you know, a lot of a lot of teachers have said we're at this breaking point of we can either go to this timeline uh, of more chaos and more separation um, or to that other timeline of oneness and creating the, the golden era that we've been told is almost prophesized for years to come. Mm. Um, I wanted to ask you, and this is something that I heard channeled from the Z's uh, in an interview that you had with Regina Meredith um, about interdimensional communication, which is that we've always had the ability to be allowed to be aware that we can have that, we can communicate interdimensionally. And we've always known innately that we have those capabilities. But there has been many constraints and discouragements put in place to discourage humans from investigating and opening up even wider to that. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's interesting. The thing that the Z's say is that around 10,000 years ago, and they haven't given a specific year, and they've said, we don't want to distract you. And they also said there are people on the planet who will talk about that period of history, and that's not our job. But they said around 10,000 years ago, we essentially got limited or clamped on Earth. And they've talked about a few different things. They say that we were designed as incarnate souls in a human body to be very expansive. And what has played out over the last 10,000 years is approximately, they say, 10 to 20 percent our possibility of the world that we could have created. So they said, you're still evolving and there is evolution happening, but it's at 20% the rate that it could have been if this clamp hadn't been put in place. Now, of course, when you hear this, everyone goes, oh, who did it? Well, how do we get rid of it? Don't, you know, you, your yeah. mind can start It's that to, immediate they, yeah. us versus them mentality exactly. that we're conditioned with. And it wants with. to fight. And yeah. I know when I first encountered this idea in about 2008, 2007, for me, it was quite shocking. And it put me on a bit of a path of grief for a while. And then now I've kind of learned in much the same way that I've had to come to, come to terms with the dark and the suffering on the planet being here so that I can... A, exist within it, and B, find my way and my place within it. Um, it's the same principle. They say the good news is the clamp's coming off because the consciousness from inside the earth is rising at such a rate. So they've talked about things that are buried inside the earth that are designed to essentially reawaken us and reactivate us and that they're coming online now. The one thing that's different with disease, what you said at the beginning about some teachers saying we're going to go the way of more chaos or more um, division, the Z's have said, they always said 2017 to 2024 would be, they didn't say rough years because they said they would be incredible years on a level of consciousness for many people, like people would wake up in a way they never had. However, they did also say that it was going to be a very tough time on an earthly level. And there would be a feeling of overwhelm and exhaustion because a lot needs to be cleared out. And that relates to this, I will say the powers that are in control of the clamp that are still here on the planet and that have 
followed that path and want to keep a certain level of limit on us as a society. So I know there are many people out there who talk about that, work with that. The Zs share it more recently because they want us to be aware of what we're moving through. They say you are in an energetic war, but that shouldn't depress you. You've, you've been in it ever since you were born. The difference is you're now seeing it, feeling it, understanding it, and so is more of society. So that's yeah. kind of what they, what they refer to there. Yeah, and, and, and you talked about how Earth anchored in, in, in it has these um, potentials of awakening for us. Were these instilled um, for a specific reason? Why, why is humanity right now choosing to go on this path of ascension and, and, and evolution? Why, why now? That might be a great question for them, actually. Uh, so I know we're going to I know we're going to channel at some point, but that that would be a great question to come back to for for them because that's not something I have the answer to in my mind right now. But I know they'll have something to say about it. Yeah, yeah. And and this have they told you anything around this battle of 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 the energies or or this energetic dynamic that is going on? Um, why is it necessary for the dark energies to minimize on planet Earth? Because they say there will, all, there will always be some level of polarity, but we're moving through a shift time where light and consciousness start to infuse Earth more and more. It's interesting, they've given some long range predictions, like they said that it, it might take two to 300 years for the energy of war to leave the planet, which you know sounds like a long time. But one of the things they've helped me understand, and I think lots of other people is, we're here for a lifetime in this identity. So you as Emilio, me as Lee, uh, we'll have one, this will be one shot with this identity. Our soul may choose to reincarnate and we may be different in some, in some ways and similar in some ways. Um, but it's interesting when you hear a, a forecast like that because you think, oh no, I want war to go away now because that's Again, you can, you can get into the war mentality, which is like, that is our biggest problem. And the Zs say war was seeded a little over 10,000 years ago in a, very, in a very deeply designed way to hold you all back. So they say it shows up in your thoughts, it shows up in your emotions, even if you're a, if you, if you're a pacifist and you're against war as we see it playing out with countries, they say it's seeded on the planet. So when they talk about this detox and this cleanse that we're kind of going through now, but they say it's very important it happens slowly because they say the slower it happens, the less destruction there will be. And it is not our path to have destruction again. We are supposed to break through, upshift and up level, but it will mean a loss of our old identity. So while we're alive as Emilio and Lee, if we live a long life, by the end of our life, we will see things completely differently. And I think anybody you speak to who's in their 80s or 90s can tell you that's true. But what they've said is the people who are 80 and 90 now, it will be like three times the level of difference that, that we, we might see the world in in 40 or 60 years time because we're becoming a lot more aware of our place in the universe. They say for a long time, You've only been allowed to think of yourselves as Earth, but actually you are a part of the universe. And a lot that's moving through us right now is allowing us to prepare for that, open to that, and that takes time. So it's always interesting when they give long range forecasts because I can feel people yeah. in the room go, oh no, you know, and I get it. I get it on a human level, but the more I understand it through their lens, I realize we might be here for, if we live a long life, 90, 100 years, but that's huge, and we're we're all we're all in a relay race. We're we're a part of a relay race, and they say light is everywhere. You've just got to know how to find it, generate it, seek it, and return to it whenever you've gone through a, a long dark period where you need to reconnect with light again. So they say it's really important for us to understand how to generate those frequencies in ourselves and return to them. And the more we do it the more we compound a new baseline for ourselves so that light, peace, joy becomes more normal. We're, we're essentially rewiring ourselves very consciously. Yeah. I love how you use the term uh, forecast because I, you've said in the past that you're a bit of like a weatherman for energy. 
Um, and it's, it's really cool, like just being able to read energies and, and you, you know, I've ex- you've extensively talked about how empathic um, you were as a, as a kid. Um, staying on this topic of empathy, you know, we were just the other day, I'm carrying out a master's program right now, and we were doing like personality tests, and a lot of people in my class um, came up with the gift of, of, of empathy. Mm. So it was really surprising to me because, um, you know, we hear that word tossed around a lot, like an empath, someone who feels energy. What has that experience been like for you, uh, understanding that you can read energy, understanding that you can forecast and tap into people's energy field uh, whenever you want? Honestly, for the first 20 to 22 years, it was confusing and hard. (laughs) I wish I could say, oh, it was great. I think it was never hard for me in the areas of creativity because, you know, I've always been someone who creates. And so that was a safe zone to have your empathy. But in terms of human relationships, understanding myself, my empathy was uh, more like a curse because I didn't understand that was what was going on. So I I didn't understand I was feeling so much. So I would, you know, be destructive towards myself. Um, You know, my destruction showed up as developing an eating disorder quite young. I mean, I was taken to Weight Watchers age 10. Um, I lost 60 pounds when I was 16 years old and I was a lot smaller on in frame. So, you know, that was my way of coping, which admittedly wasn't a great one, but it, It also showed me transformation because I felt like I lived in a different body and people treated me differently because of my size. And that was very interesting. Mm -hmm. And then I flipped it in my late teens and suddenly again, didn't know who I was. So for me, I think the journey to know my own identity, whatever that means, I mean, I hold identity loosely as a term, but I actually needed to claim myself. So for me, the journey of empathy was a journey of recovery, really. And I, I, again, I'll say most people in my generation, I think that was pretty true. We didn't have a lot of people around us talking about feelings. So the Oprah show was like my guiding light when I was 16 years old, because this was before she did Super Soul Sunday. She just had everyday people on the show talking about feelings. You get a car, you get a car. (laughs) No, there were no cars, there were no fridges, there were no smegs. It was, uh, it was just, um, it was just, she was asking people how they feel, like how you do you. And, and to me, that was a revelation, particularly living in Britain. So I ate that show up because it was like a light for me. And so slowly I figured out my empathy, but I think like all of us, right? We're, we're always learning more. I I still feel like my understanding of my energetics evolves as I grow and as I change. And of course, as the world changes, now it's really normal to me. But even you, you called me the energetic weatherman. I think I described myself as that maybe three years ago, once or twice. But if I hadn't done what I did with those videos for so many years and got feedback from people as to how it was doing what it was doing for them, I would never have been able to figure that term out because, you know, it's, it's been more like by trying things out. Now I understand more about what I do and what my ability is. And, you know, like all of us, I see people doing great things all the time. And I'm like, wow, wouldn't it be great to be a classical pianist? And I'm like, Lee, you're busy enough. You've got your lane. Appreciate the, pia- the, pia- the piano player who has done it since they were a kid. Doesn't mean I can't try it. But, you know, I I kind of come to terms with what my lane is. And also, it's interesting that it's appreciated now. The Zs always said that. They always said, you know, you're going to see in 15, 20 years time, uh, people are going to really want more from the healing arts. And at the time, that seemed odd. It's, I was like, okay, maybe, but then here we are. And it's like, wow, this is great because the more people there are doing this kind of work, putting their stuff out on the internet, the more support there is from all the different voices that we all need. Cause we all resonate with different people differently. Um, that's part of the wave. So I would say now I enjoy my empathy and I have found the way that it works and also the way that it doesn't. And, and I'm able to kind of 
manage it sounds like the wrong word, but I would say be with it in a way that it can be useful for my life and my work. Uh, in in 2014, there was a dissolution point uh, with disease that, that you were going through, um, almost where you had a choice of whether to stop consciously channeling disease. And they already even had someone else lined up who at the time was younger, 20, whatever old um, this person was, um, so they could channel through that person. And they said in an interview that you chose to double down on your commitment. What was that like? What were you going through at that point in 2014? Um, yeah, it's interesting. It, it, I would say the years of 2014 and 2015 were big turning points for me. I, I met Stephen, my now husband, and that was a game changer for me. You know, meeting him and us becoming this partnership and the deepest, richest partnership I'd ever had. Um, that really changed me. But I also, I think I was struggling a little bit. I felt like I was repeating myself. And, and that didn't feel good to me. You know, I'm a, I'm a true creator in that way, that I don't want to just keep reinventing the same wheel. It has to evolve. It has to innovate. Otherwise, it doesn't feel alive. And I also found that channeling was tricky still for people. So I would do like the energy updates and people would like those. But then I'd have someone say, I love your energy updates. I've been really enjoying um, reading your channeling, but my husband thinks it's weird. And so I was really trying to, which is, you know, I, I you know, I'm, I'm used to that. But I was kind of going, is this the best use of my time? Is this what I should be doing? How can I best serve? And so I really played with... Which is that key question that you learned at that one seminar that opened everything up. Yes, how can I best... Yes, how yes. can God... What was the question? Uh, what if oh. God knew best how to use you and you let go of your own agenda? Yeah, I was at a seminar with Chuck Spezzano, Psychology of Vision, and there were 350 of us. I was in my early 20s and... Oh, when I was mid-20s because I was about to start channeling. And he said... Uh, you know, if you could let go of your own ideas of what you should be doing with your life, just say, God, use me. If you can do that, come here to the front. And like a third of the room ran to the front, all happy clappy. Oh, yeah, oh, God, use me. Then there was a third of the room going, oh, God, I'm, no, I know exactly why I'm here. I came to this workshop to figure out how to, you know, and then there was those of us in the middle. And I was kind of like, oh, I can really relate to the people with their arms folded because I want to be a singer songwriter. I've decided that I'm going to take my music mm. around the world and I'm going to use my voice and it's going to help heal people the way that music's helped heal me. So, but I, I gave it up for God, I guess. And, um, and I, I did, I walked to the front of the room and it was only years later that I put it together that two months later, I started doing private readings uh, at the behest of a friend who was a yoga teacher, a Kundalini yoga teacher. And mm. uh, yeah, and the rest is history. That's um, 2004. So, yeah, there is something about surrendering your agenda. And the hilarious thing for me is I have wanted to give up doing the energy updates very seriously twice. I have wanted to stop channeling the Z's three times. And every time I go through one of those, I come back even more. Is, is it like a conversation with them about like, hey, I'm going through this or what is that? They've been great. They always, they, they said, we'll never leave you because we're together. We're together for life. Um, they Was said, it a soul contract type yeah, of relationship? Yeah, it's interesting. There, there are a few different, I'm learning more about our contract in this book series because we're currently, uh -huh. uh, we're currently recording for book four, which is about wow, dying and transformation. Yeah. Um, book two comes next May and then book three is January, February, 2023. But I'm learning little pieces of our connection all the time because Diana will ask a question and sometimes they'll illustrate using our connection. Um, but it's interesting. I think something happened hugely for me in 2019. About four or five months before COVID hit, I just I had a very profound experience, a set of experiences at a retreat I was running and it left me altered. And I came out of that going, I'm going to really focus and deepen with my work and it was just like an intuitive metaphysical conversation and then it's interesting how when you make that commitment opportunities appear ideas appear connections mm. appear it's not like you have to sit and strategize it it's 
it's for me anyway, because I work intuitively. So long as I'm in line with my intuition, the physical things show up or come to me. Yeah, another another guest, uh, I call them p paradigm shifters. Uh, he mentioned this one quote about commitment that he said, the stronger your commitment unleashes, it's equal in resistance. So mm -hmm. when you chose to double down on your commitment with disease, did you notice any sort of resistance around you in your personal life, things that had to dissolve? What was that process before, or shedding like for you? Before, mm. actually. So I think when I was in the resistance, I wasn't conscious I was about to double down, but I would be feeling uncomfortable. I had got better at learning the psychic energy around putting your work out into the world at that point. When I first put my first energy update video out in 2012, and I'd been doing my work publicly for six years, but I knew that putting yourself on camera like that is very different to audio or writing or a photograph. You're much more, um, yeah, you're much more in people's consciousness. And I mm. cried the day after it came out. So it was this weird thing of, I'm compelled to do this. I feel like I'm supposed to do this. And some small part of me is is nervous about, about what will this expose me to? Am I safe? Uh, how do I feel about all these people connecting with something I put out? And it used to be for years that I would put an energy update out and I would feel weird for about two days afterwards because I would feel the psychic energy of their engagement. Now I've got to a point, I'm so seasoned with it and I do so many things that I know how to keep myself in the center of it all and have a very light awareness of what's going on. Mm. Um, but yeah, the resistance, I would say, preceded the, um, the doubling down. And for me, the resistance was giving myself permission to not feel beholden to the audience I had, which was also a loosening of responsibility for me that was new for me. Yeah, wow, I love that. And the Z's have talked about the origins of humanity. They talked about ancient civilizations like Lemuria, like Atlantis, and how they were really high energy, high technology, high energy technology civilizations, and that we would start seeing a reemergence in energy technology uh, in the world right now. And, and even just technology in general, we're seeing mm. things like artificial intelligence, the metaverse, all these different things that in the world in less than five years is going to look completely different because of that technology. I was wondering if, you know, it has been brought to your awareness, any sort of energy technologies that are being seeded right now and coming to the forefront that humans we're going to need to be able to transcend to this next, next wave, this next era that we're going through any energy technologies. There are various things that I've seen over the years. Um, for example, FLFE, which is a, a company where they have a focused life force energy device um, and mm. you can connect with them. They're online, flfe.net. Um, I've had them on my Impact the World show a couple of times, really nice guys and doing really interesting stuff around raising the vibration in your home, on your phone, at an address. Um, so that's just one example that I'm most familiar with. Um, but there are so many, I mean, I, I know there are many, um, podcasters out there who this is their focus and they're all about celebrating what those things are and bringing them to you. My main experience of it is hearing it through the Z's. So they'll yeah. often say, for those of you who are buying into the doom and gloom narrative that you're being fed. They say you don't understand what innovations have already been created that have not yet fully emerged or have slowly started to emerge that are going mm -hmm. to be the solution to some of the issues that you have. So I think it's really important to take a balanced view. I think there are certainly things that can be used for harm. And I think it's important we pay attention and go, oh, no, that doesn't feel very good. We need to steer clear of that. But I, I think what's even more dangerous than that is only believing in the harmful, only believing in what often the mainstream media narrative will be. Uh, I don't want to throw every mainstream media outlet under the bus there because there are some great ones, there's some independent ones, but there is this tendency to keep people trapped in fear, lack of possibility, so that they don't leave the system. They want you staying in the system. 
And mm. what we've been told from the Zs is that the system as we know it, which is holding pretty much all of us right now, is going to reform and transform over the years to come. So to me, that's where these energy technologies come in. They're rising. And something you said about Atlantis and Lemuria, the Zs said that those places were too high frequency to be able to remain grounded. So things got distorted and things blew up, uh, which is why they say that there is a return of Atlantean and Lemurian energies right now, the, the positives from those places, but it has to be seeded slowly and at a level that the human body and consciousness and the earth can assimilate. Hmm. They've also called our generations the transitory bridge generations um, because I feel like even the kids being born right now uh, are even wired completely different. We've talked about this with people like Billy Carson of the DNA, even in the DNA, it's it's coming in differently. It's shifting. Have have the Z's talked about any of that? The the bodily physical changes that this human vessel is going through during this time. They they. I'm trying to think about body. I mean, they do talk about the physical changes we go through in general. But what they have said about the younger generation, and this was in recent recordings for I think book four um, mm. or book three. They've talked about the wave of particularly teenagers on the planet right now. So we're recording this in 2022. Um, they said how tough it is for so many of them because so many of them have come for a future world that is not yet here. And so they are hitting hard up against some of the dense energy here on the planet. And that's why some of them are highly sensitive, highly struggling, they are not wired the same way um, as, you know, we know what those of us in, you know, the 40 plus generation are used to seeing perhaps. So they said a lot more support is needed for them. And they said that's mm. also why we've seen such a wave of um, suicides and yeah. people disappearing and leaving the planet, which is really tragic for the families, the loved ones, the people who are left behind. But the Zs have said that this group, they knew when they incarnated that they might not go full term with their life, but they came for a really important purpose. And so they said the way they see their life or the ending of their life is quite different to how those of us that love them and get attached to them will feel. Because of course, human grief is a deep, deep, deep process. So it's interesting to hear them talk about that. And they say that their job is to literally bring in this almost alien electrical wave to the planet that the planet isn't yeah. used to. So it's tough for them because they get a lot of resistance from people who are older and at the top who are like, what is this? And it's like, well, it's the future. And yeah. not all of them will come in with that level of intensity around the alien electricity. Huh. And I mean alien being foreign, but I also mean alien being universal. Um, but but a lot of them will. And so it's it's really important to look out for any teenagers around you if you mm. notice they're really struggling or they seem distressed, disturbed, yeah. like they've got no one to talk to. And that's difficult because we know that to be a teenager is a chrysalis. You basically go into a cocoon and you often isolate certain adults that you used to talk to or your parents or... So, you know, holding space for them to... Um, go through some of the intensity they're going through and find a way to discharge and express it. If you can help someone with that, that's really important. So this is why your podcast, for example, is so important because you are a bridge for that generation. And so the more rememberings that they can have of, yes, this is how the planet looks currently, but what you remember as home, as a frequency, is birthing, and it might be your job, to be one of the carriers of that flame, the more they can get into that track rather than thinking, oh, I'm not welcome here. My frequency is not allowed on this planet. I feel like a stranger, which I think all of us can go through, but apparently it's hitting the teenagers now uh, who, who are built that way, who are wired that way quite strongly. Yeah, and and we're really tuning into the, to that consciousness of the, of the teenagers that are tuning in that are on the planet right now. Uh, I, I'm sensing that it's important to explain the part about the exit points that our soul chose to uh, incarnate with and have that 
sort of free will of when to exit. Um, what can you tell us about the exit points that were mentioned in the book? So many, many years ago, the Z's started sharing that we all have exit points. And what this means is they are markers in time throughout our life where we may choose to go. We may choose to pass or die. And that the death can happen in many different ways. It could be, uh, they always say this, they say it's, it's very easy for you to die. They say, and for those of you who have a bit of a death wish or who are wishing that you weren't on the planet, but you are still alive, they say, if you're here, there's a reason. And all you need to do is figure out what your purpose is. And that doesn't mean your purpose as in some big outer doing. I think often we hear purpose and we think, well, I'm supposed to build a company that creates holistic technology. Mm, the Z's would argue that is uh, that is an, a physical manifestation of your purpose. Your purpose might be to bring healing to the world. And so you do that in conversation, you bring healing to yourself, and you do it through this company that you create that has the same mission. So, um, Connecting to your purpose is really important if you feel like you don't want to be here. But they always say, you know, be really curious about why you're alive if you're feeling like you don't want to be because it just means you haven't found that thing yet. They say that we can have as many as, they've said, you know, it can be as many as 50 to 100 or more sometimes exit points through our life where we renegotiate. So, for example, I don't know, I could be in one this week. Uh, where, you know, they're going, do you still want to be here? Is it time? Is it time to hook out? The one thing they say about our death, our death is never personal. They say your death is always timed and agreed upon by you to have the maximum effect. And they use the example of Princess Diana as a public person and the impact of her death, how she really opened hearts, the timing of her death, the tragedy of her death for anybody who cared about her or had feelings mm. of her and of course you know that doesn't even go with her kids and her family I mean that's a that's that's kind of none of our business but that's a whole other level of grief for them um, so they say that your death will happen when your soul sees it's the right time for you and the right time for the people that you're going to leave behind so they say even someone who lives alone in the woods and doesn't see people doesn't like people your death will still be timed vibrationally that you leaving your body at that moment will have a vibrational ripple effect on the land and the cabin that you live in. So that was very interesting to me. So they say death is pre-programmed all, all of these points through your life that you can either choose to take or you can choose to go, oh, I've graduated through level three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I'm going to stay for level nine. So they say most of us won't take them, but they're there as awakening moments. So a death window or an exit point could be happening around the time you go through a dark night of the soul or something major happens in your life where you feel like you die unto yourself. It doesn't always have to be physical death, but we do go through these transformational cycles of death and rebirth. Yeah, and, and it's super interesting because we've seen right now more on like a public level, these influential figures, public figures in the public eye. You mentioned, thank you for mentioning Princess Diana, because I know how much that opened the heart of people in, yeah. in the UK. Um, for me, the most, I think, impactful in the last couple of years has been, for example, the exiting of someone like Kobe Bryant, mm. who I grew up playing basketball and mm. his consciousness, his energy, the mentality truly shaped uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the, the way I, I do things in, in the world and the way I approach my my purpose and my work and my mission. Um, so I wanted to ask you as well, like the exit points of recent spiritual teachers and leaders that have been choosing to leave people like Thich Nhat Hanh, um, what is that purpose behind them exiting right now? So uh, just listening to these guys, uh, you know, Tick served as long as he could and it was his time. It was it, it would have got hard for him on the earth to carry on any longer. And the exiting of a spiritual teacher or a great friend or someone you love is an opportunity for you to reckon with and become a bit more of what it is they were giving you. So if you have a particularly loving, warm friend and you, you go like, oh my God, she was the one in our group 
who was loving and warm to everybody and she was the connector. When she passes and she can't play out that role, pay attention because someone else might never do it to her level or to her ability, but slightly take up that mantle because she taught something. And in her exiting, the imprint that you miss that she used to be the, the conductor of, someone else might now become, or you might become a bit more that your way, uh, in your own way. So the spiritual teachers going, I think it's interesting because you can even see how, you know, whether it's David Bowie or, um, you know, someone who is a, a public figure, we don't know those people, but we have deeply connected with or been moved by their art. And so what happens is they talk about grief windows. So they say, when you grieve somebody or something, you are not just grieving that thing or that person. It opens up a grief window in you so that any unprocessed or unreleased grief can start to come through. So I often think when a public figure dies that we didn't personally know, but we felt a connection to, or maybe they were a safe haven for us in what they represented or their work. Yeah. It, it's this moment of loss that we deeply feel, but then we come out the other side and we get to transmute it. The Z's call grief the great transformer. And they have said that grief is going to play, they've been saying this since 2019, 2020, early 2020, that grief is going to play a really important part on the planet in the next decade. And I remember doing my annual energy update at the end of 2019 and their first theme was health, human health, and how human health Whoa. was going. And I, <laughs> and I, you know, at the time, you know, I never really understand these things at the time because I can't make sense of them because they're talking about the future. But they were talking about human health and grief are going to be a big deal this whole decade. So not just, you know, with what we saw happen from March 2020. Boom. Yeah. We'll, we'll hit them with a pandemic <laughs> real yeah. quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, and, and, and there's so much to it. I mean, it's such a complex subject and there are many different sides to the whole thing, but as an overarching theme, grief is an awakening force in our life, even though at times it can feel like hell and essentially like death. That's why intense, deep grief feels like death because you are in death energy. You, you try and go as close as you can to the person that you've lost. You try and leave your human life and get as close to them as you can. And so you're essentially in death energy for a while when you're in that, that real uh, immobilizing grief that we can go through. I love that. And, and Lee, as, as we're coming up on the hour, um, I would love to touch base with you on the opportunity to uh, allow the disease to come through. If there's Let's any other questions. Perfect. Um, we talked about things like the energy of war, um, you know, the anchor points inside the earth that are allowing us to have this awakening. Um, just to, depending on how you're feeling, I would love to open the space for them and also open people's minds to what is possible yeah, no, when we're connected with spirit, when we're connected with our guides. I don't know whether they'll give a message before they ask you for a question or whether they'll just go straight to questions. Awesome. I'll just close my what, eyes and take a minute and then we'll start. Let me just... Um, awesome. Yeah. Okay. Ha, ah, good. The frequency is bright here. Uh, this one, Emilio, holds a high point of frequency. And sometimes, Emilio, for you, it can be difficult to get or we should say stay grounded. You are like a very, very tall pyramid and you are learning how to widen the base of your pyramid. And physicality always helps you with that. Uh, but lately you have been finding that the breath is a wonderful stabilizing force for you and a resource that you didn't necessarily know you had access to in years past. So you are a leader in these moments that you are being a leader for, of course, all of you on earth are everything all at once. So sometimes you are a leader, sometimes you are a student, sometimes you are a follower. That's the beauty of multidimensional living. But at this moment in time, you elected to come back with a group of warriors. You have had a life where you literally were the leader of warriors in war. And so your version of that in this lifetime is things like this podcast. Ha! Huh. You are essentially creating 
mm, 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 uh, educational lessons and experiences for your warriors. You know they are energy warriors who are on the planet at this time to remember who they are. It is not easy to land on Earth and remember who you are uh, at a universal and spiritual level for there are not teachings yet mm, built into your entry point uh, on Earth. And you are all here at the tail end of what we would call the old world as it moves into the new. And we have to be careful because you tend to, as human beings, think in black and whites. So you hear old world and new world and you tend to think they are not connected. Of course, there will be many elements of the old world that will come with you into the new world. But uh, what is important for you to understand right now, especially those of you who are listening or watching to this who feel displaced in your life, is you are here to plant new flowers. If you do not like the flowers you see on earth, become an energy gardener and plant new ones. That is exactly what you are doing, Emilio. In fact, you are planting forests as fast as you can. You have a speed about you, which makes mm, your prolific nature quite delightful to you. And it's something that you have learned to harness rather than let run away with you. And so you have harnessed it for good and you are creating an energy umbrella under which mm, your warriors can, we will say, check in, uh, calibrate, educate themselves, uh, figure out what the next steps are. Their trust of you is mm, ancient, in fact. You might think you are meeting new people through this work, but we would argue you are meeting old people. For mm. in times past, you were, we will say, notorious. And we do not mean that in a bad way, but we do mean that you were designed for groups. Uh, your soul has had many incarnations and iterations where you have been in the design of being a group leader. That is why you feel this so clearly. And you will uh, have many who you will reach and touch and contact who will not only work alongside you in years to come, but there will be several of them that you will elevate and that you will mm, support as they take on the mantle. Your life, Emilio, is designed to be long. Of course, you have choices around that. Uh, there can be moments that your exit points get quite close to you. In fact, you are a bit like a cat with nine lives in that sense. For you are so close to mm, 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 the realm of soul in your focus and your way of being that it can sometimes feel to you like you aren't truly here in the body. So you are always connected to that realm. But at this moment in time, on this day that we speak to you, your life is designed to be long. And so for you, looking after your physical body, your physical vehicle is of utmost importance because it is going to serve you for a long time and it is also going to be the thing that helps you ground. So do you have any questions on anything we just said or any other questions? Hmm. First and foremost, I really receive and I'm honored that we're having this conversation. Uh, I receive fully with my heart and thank you for all those insights about me personally. I know I'll be unpacking that for a while to come. Mm, but I wanted so to long, stay on the fast. Uh, we would say <laughs> one to two weeks and you will be done with it. <laughs> I would love to stay on that energy of attracting our soul group into our life. You mentioned that in my soul, the, the warrior tribe, the warrior group, how do we go about bringing in that soul tribe, that group into our life so that we can begin to create these massive waves uh, and anchor in the new consciousness that's emerging? Well, we will mm, give you one way of seeing it, although, of course, there are many different aspects to it. But it is with those whom your heart feels open. So, for example, there are many of you doing this right now. You are in relationships and relationship dynamics where your heart cannot be open. Uh, you are playing out healing with people. So you are mm, in contracts, friendships, intimate relationships, lover relationships, parental relationships, where you do not know yet how to open your heart fully and be at peace in your heart when you are with these people. That is you in school. That is you learning to love. And that is the journey for most of you. But when you have cleaned up some of those dynamics and taken accountability for your part in them, why are you so interested in chasing a person who is unavailable? Why are you so addicted to staying with someone who, as you would call it, is ghosting you? 
What is it about <laughs> being ghosted that you need to feel over and over again in order to heal in yourself? Where did the original point of abandonment begin? Now, we can always yeah. trace it back to your separation from source and spirit and universal consciousness as it relates to oneness. Oneness is how all of you are connected, always connected through oneness. It is a harmonic layer of mm, the soul realms. So all of you are always slightly grieving that, but therefore when you find wonderful relationships, partnerships, friendships, uh, business acquaintances, where your heart feels safe enough to be open with them, and they also feel that with you, and you go through a little bit of history together to test that and to see that you don't hit a roadblock three, six, nine months in, these are the people who you truly want to attract because the heart is a magnet. And the heart mm. wants to magnetize other people whose hearts you resonate with. It is not a tragedy to not resonate with everybody. We know some of you are a little bit fixated on this and you should let it go. You get upset that you can't have a heart connection with someone rather than accepting I can't have a heart connection with this person. Why don't I go and look for someone that I can? Hmm. Is the heart only a magnet when it's open? No, the heart magnetizes for you in, we would call it mm, quiet ways all of the time, but you don't often see what the magnet is drawing to you. So what we will give you an example of here is, your heart might be poking and prompting you, for your heart is essentially your spiritual brain. It is the brain center of your mm, 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 energy field. Uh, the heart might be prompting you to go and connect with somebody, but your mind is so mm, obsessed or fixated on a dominant mental emotional learning that you are trying to heal, you don't hear it. So mm. when that person comes into the room, it might be that your heart sees them, feels them, and wants to get your attention. But if you are not open in your heart, you will not be able to feel them. One of the reasons so many of you are scared to have an open heart is you think you will be wounded. And yet the truth is, what you are all actually working towards is knowing how to live with an open heart and having gone through enough, we will call them boundary lessons and healings, that you do not need to worry about having an open heart. For your open heart is strong and sits inside you. But for many of you, that takes several relationships, uh, sometimes many, many years to get to. So uh, sometimes you do not have an open heart, but you bump into someone where your heart opens. And it is often on those days where you are most shut down, where you are most mm, upset, where you are most pulled back that sometimes you are in a state that you need to, shall we say, open from. But other days, it is because you are about to have an almighty heart opening and your soul feels it coming. And so you go into contraction right before. We talked about with Lee about the, the young generations that are coming into the planet right now. And I wanted to know if there is any transmission that you would have for them, for these leaders that will be inheriting this new earth uh, around the time of 2030, 2050, which is are truly going to be these massive uh, shifts that I've heard you, you speak upon. Um, how can we best equip these young generations with the tools and the consciousness necessary for them to carry out this prophecy? Well, firstly, we will say that one of the benefits for those of you who are in your, we will say, teenage years right now, or perhaps your early 20s, is that you were born, most of you, to a generation of parents who were a little more healed than their parents. Uh, they were a little more emotionally aware, a little more conscious. But uh, what those middle ages can lack somewhat for you who are their children mm, or their mm, 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 students or mm, they have been your guardians they do not have mm, a strong compass inside them sometimes, for they came from, we will say, uh, humble beginnings where energy vibration was concerned when they were born, and they have had to grow and shed very fast. And so they have done a lot of good work and they will continue to, but it has left some of you who are, we will say, uh, teenagers or early 20s with parents who you are a little confused about. Uh, you aren't quite sure what to do because the old paradigm would say that the parent is supposed to guide you and be in charge of you. 
The new paradigm would say the parent can continually evolve into becoming your friend when they no longer need to be your parent in those first, let's say, 20 years. And of course, a parent is always going to be a parent. Uh, but what some of you lack is guidance as to how to be in this new world. Remember, too, that the world has changed rapidly in the last 20 years. So the climate that you have found yourself in is also new for your parents. So you are having to grow up faster than the generation before you. You are having to find your maturity faster than the generation before you. And while many of you might have wonderful wisdom and support from the adults in your life, and you feel that very deeply, there are a great many of you who feel like the adults in your life are as confused as you are, and that's a little disappointing to you. Well, everyone is going through this rapid shift together. So we will say this, look to your own spiritual path for guidance as much as you look to others. And there is nothing wrong with educating yourself around what is my true spiritual path? What do I believe? What don't I believe? What am I here for? And remember, you are all supposed to be different. You are not supposed to be one way. You are not supposed to be one path. You are here to be a highly multidimensional generation. And the generation before you paved the way for that. But you are going to take it even further than the older generations have seen. Secondly, don't panic that you don't see things in the world that represent what you feel you are here to do. You are going to be a generation who is more emboldened by innovation and change than certainly two generations ago was able to be. So understand that it is your job to seed and create in the world new ways of being. Do not dismiss the wisdom of certain elders that you trust and that your heart feels open to because they will be vital for you and they will be helpful. But you are supposed to be pioneers in a new way. And we say that not to put pressure on you. You don't have to do it by the time you're even 30 or 40 if you don't want to. Have a slow gestation before you emerge as a pioneer. Uh, but what we are reminding you is that, yes, you do not always see the world the way you would like to see it. Well, that's because you came here to recreate it. Hmm. This purview that you talked about of multi-dimension, dimension, <laughs> multi-dimensions, it's natural for you. And I wanted to get a sense of clarity around when we're going into this viewpoint of being the multi-dimensional beings that we are and stepping fully into that, what can we expect? What shifts in our lives will happen? Um, and humanity as a whole, when they step into being multidimensional, uh, what will that look like? Uh, well, you are seeing a fight around multidimensionality on Earth right now with the war that goes on between people, the black and white judgments, the lack of nuance, no room for gray. Mm, some of you refer to it as cancel culture. And we are not here to speak about uh, each individual and each case, for of course, it must be addressed on a case-by-case -case basis. But cancelling anybody, whether that's your friend who upset you, uh, or whether that's a public figure who needs to be transformed and healed, will not work for any of you in the long term. We are not saying, by all means, remove power and privilege from those who have abused those two things. We understand the need for that to happen. But why we bring this up is... There is a very strong mm, black and white thinking movement that is playing out on the planet that is anti-multidimensionality. What you will see as multidimensionality grows is people will hold their identities a little more lightly than they used to. They will not be trying to fit themselves into boxes anymore. They will recognize, ah, I can be this box on this day, this box on that day, and then I can be nine different boxes on a Friday if I choose to keep moving myself in the way I feel, the way I think. So a multidimensional being looks a lot less fixed than what we would call the old human soul. Uh, you will see the old human soul in operation on the planet, even in some young people. There will be some teenagers and early 20s who have been quite indoctrinated in the way of being an old soul. They are fixed. They are ready to fight. They are ready to castigate groups they don't understand. They are ready to judge. They are ready to separate. They are ready to go to war or annihilate individuals or groups they don't understand. And this is learned behavior. This is not how you incarnate. This is learned behavior. So multidimensionality starts to look like you allowing yourself to be a transforming being 
recognizing that nothing is fixed, including your personality or your day or, or your body. Everything is going to keep changing. But on our mm, realm, uh, multidimensionality is the way, meaning right now we are a group of voices who appear to you as one voice, uh, simply because we are coming through one individual who can connect multidimensionally to us. And then he himself is an example of multidimensionality in action in the many different mm, roles he has on earth. And we don't just mean his personal life. Here we are referring to his public life, which is what more of you would be familiar with of him. He is the norm. He is not unusual. He is the norm. It is just that he is a little, shall we say, from the future in that sense. Those of you who are coming along now, you understand that you are able to express yourself in so many different ways. Uh, so that is how multidimensionality will show up in the years to come. If I understood correctly from the first book of Channelings, is the part of the dimensions we can be at any dimension at any given moment and we don't have to travel anywhere to get to that dimension uh, yes would, we'll would it be correct to say that so you and lee's body right now and consciousness you are right now in a different dimension to the one you were in 20 minutes ago when you two were speaking and when you two were speaking you were in a different dimension to the one that you were both in before you started speaking the dimensions move through you all day long so mm, higher dimensions uh, put you into more of a state of peace, oneness, love, compassion, connection, uh, creativity. Those are higher dimensions that are moving through you. So often there is this human idea that the dimension is some arrival point that you will get to and then never go backwards. Uh, I want to live in the fifth dimension. Good, figure out how to live in the third and fourth. Uh, because if you don't figure out how to live in the third and fourth, you can't bring the fifth dimension into where you are. So it's not necessarily that you're trying to get rid of the third dimension to get to the fifth. It's that you are learning how to infuse more fifth dimensional energy into your mm -mm, third dimensional life. And we will be honest with you. We are not fond of these terms, even though we understand why they exist on the earth and why they're important. They are a little like measuring sticks. And because you are linear, you need measuring sticks. But from our perspective, uh, dimensions are more of a movement than a place or a fixed mm, 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 line. Hmm. Ziz, I truly honor your work right now on the planet and for being here and being able to connect with us in this way because I feel like your presence, your guidance is truly felt. Uh, there's going to be many ripple effects from just the energy that you're anchoring in right now. Um, I know that Lee has, has things to do in his personal life, and I would love to ask if there's any last transmission messages, sacred wisdom that you would love to leave us with today. Uh, it's been such an honor. Well, firstly, it is our job to be here. It is what we are supposed to do. Oh. This is what you are doing. Uh, you are supposed to do this. Lee is supposed to do this. So we appreciate your words, but uh, we were not doing anything extraordinary other than what we were all supposed to be doing. Uh, but we do enjoy your focusing, those who are listening, uh, on the fact that there is a ripple effect that will come from this. So those who resonate with our frequency, the frequency of your questions guiding us to answer important questions for those of you on the earth, it reminds you of home. For those of you who do resonate with this frequency, all it's doing is reminding you of this wider truth that you live in and are connected to and are able to tap into on any given day. So that is the power of, we will call it channeling, uh, because it reminds you of your own connection to those universal frequencies that are around you every single second. Yes, even those times when you think you are shut down, shut off, uh, binging on donuts and binging on Netflix uh, because you are trying to escape this world uh, or whatever other escape mechanism you think you are in when you are trying to pull yourself away from the world and hide deeply inside yourself, you are still surrounded by universal energy. And that's often why the hiding hurts. That's often why it feels so painful to you when you are pulling away from the universe so much because the universe is right there. And your perception that you can't feel it is actually not true. 
It's that you don't want to see it or sense it. You are in it. You are of it. You can never escape it in that way. So uh, our closing message to all of you will be, um, what an incredible time to be alive. And we have to be a little careful saying things like that because that can greatly irritate those of you who think that you are in a doomed planet and a planet where so much is bad. Well, we would ask you, who trained you to only see the negative? And are you going to undo that training? Uh, the negative exists. It's here. It's the lowest end of the energy spectrum. We're not judging or telling any of you off, but we are hopefully shaking you by the shoulders and reminding you that light is here. You are here. Love is here. And if you do not see enough of what you want to see in this world and you do not feel enough of what you want to feel in this world, maybe you are going to be one of the ambassadors of creating and curating that. Lee will tell you himself, mm, this is the kind of work he would have needed and thrived from when he was a teenager. The work that he does, the work that you do, the work that so many are doing now. So guess what? Because it was a need he had and it was missing on the planet, he set about creating it. That's what all of you are doing. And we do not mean you have to be a, shall we say, public creator. You might be a private creator. You might be someone who initiates heart energy in your family, your group, those that you work with. You might be very shy or not like people that much. And by the way, that's okay. You don't have to beat yourself up if you're a little antisocial around humans. Those of you who are like that, you are here for the energy of the planet. You are here to shift the vibration of the land you walk upon, the rooms you walk into. You are staying internal in order to cultivate your energy. All of you are welcome. All of you are welcome on this planet. However, the way you thrive on this planet is to figure out how to walk upon it. So the first thing you do as a child, or one of the first things, is to learn how to walk. Well, what do you think your soul is doing every single day as you evolve and grow? Yes, it's upsetting when you fall over and hurt yourself or if someone pushes you down. It's okay to feel the historical ancestral upset that accompanies that for people. But most of you are moving into a paradigm where rather than seeing yourselves as the victims of the dark, you will see yourselves as creators of the light. And you will know the dark is there and you will see the dark, and some of you will even choose to fight the dark because that's partly your wiring. But others among you will choose to seed light, love, harmony, wherever you go. And you will do that through what you create. You will do that through the way you create relationships. And one last thing, you are doing that when you heal. So even though some of you can sometimes see it as a failing that you have a falling out with a friend or a very difficult ending with someone, even if it is that you cannot go further with that person, they may not be the person you are supposed to still be friends with in years to come. But can you make peace in your own heart with the loss of that friend? Can you make peace with what happened? Can you forgive yourself and them for any wounds or mm, difficult energy that played out between you so that you can be free to move on? You are all here learning to love that is what you are here to do. So as you create more light and love in the world, you also go through your own, we will say, ancestral detox process. And most of you do that using other humans. So a pleasure to be with all of you today. Uh, we thank you, Emilio, for being the mm, mm, guiding light here and uh, in peace and in love to all of you. Mm. Much love. Welcome back. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> that was incredible. That was incredible. Thank you. Thank you for having me and them on and for doing what you do. And uh, yeah, it's interesting when I heard what they said, because I can hear what they're saying. Um, it's true. I don't know about you, Emilio, but I do look at what I'm doing now. And I think why I'm so grateful to be able to do what I do and to be in a position where I can, I mean, it's, it's, it, it never ceases to amaze me and I'm constantly grateful for it, is I think, God, I wish this kind of stuff had been more available to me when I was 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Would I have yeah. saved myself a lot of pain, heartache, trauma? I don't know the answer to that question, but you know, I know that's what compels me and I feel that's what compels you. Yeah, yeah. It's, and when they mentioned the, the part about healing, like, it, when we heal ourselves, we heal the world in many ways. Yeah. And 
just wanted to honor you for going down that journey of going within your depths and all the things that you went through in your childhood to be able to do the work that you do now and sustain those higher levels of energy um, that the disease are, are transmitting through you. You know, I, I believe it, it takes someone with a huge heart and a lot of courage and a lot of determination to, to be able to do the work that you're doing. So it's a true gift to be in your presence and, and to share you with whoever is joining us today. Thank you so much. It's, on, it's truly my, mm. my honor and, and my joy. And I'm really grateful to be at this point in my life and not previous points. But I love what you said. You know, it's, yeah. those, it's those times we're forged in the fire that we, when we've healed from those really difficult times, we can kind of look back and see how they created us. Yeah. Lee, we end every show with rapid fire, three questions okay. uh, called the final trio. Um, but before we get into that, I just wanted to give you a space to let people know where, anywhere on the internet where they can connect with you, where they can find you. The book is now out. I recommend uh, whoever's listening, you can get the you can get the book in physical form, but I really recommend the audio book, which is the what I uh, listened to the book through because it's the actual recordings that you had with Diana Edwards, and I think it really helped me attune with the Z's because I had been listening to them for the past week, um, and it, and it's true palpable energy that you feel in in the audio recording. So that's. That's just my two cents <laughs> for you. people. Yeah, so my mm. website is leeharrisenergy.com. Um, I do a free 30-minute energy update on YouTube every month, and there are usually eight themes that I talk about that might be showing up for you. Um, and that's probably what I'm most known for. Um, and my YouTube channel is also Lee Harris Energy. And um, then, you know, I also create music, healing music, uh, with Davor Bozik, and sometimes it's, it's kind of a bit like alternative pop. Sometimes it's very new age. It just depends. But we, you know, we seek to infuse sound healing into the world. And um, so, yeah, you can find all of it at leeharrisenergy.com. Yeah. And sound healing is an energy technology in many ways. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So first question that we have for you, uh, Lee, is why are you alive? Ooh, uh, to serve. Which sounds lofty, but I don't. I, that's what hits me to serve, and actually, I I love it. <laughs> it's 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 what lights yes. me up to serve and create right now. Mm. Serve and create. I love that. The theme of this moment right now um, that I've heard you speak upon is that there is a rising into our highest purpose on the planet. If you were to leave us with one key to unlock that highest purpose, unlock what we're supposed to be doing on this planet. The disease we're calling it, it's our job to be there. It's our job to be here. Um, what is? How can we start unlocking that key, uh, send our resumes in and, and start doing our jobs on earth? What I hear is use love to transmute as much as you can. So whether you're in a conflict with someone can you come back to your heart while you're in it and ask yourself, you know, what would my heart say about this? Um, and, and, and I think to find love in your life as much as possible. It's funny, I think when we talk about purpose, we often, I certainly was trained to think about it like a job or a career or a calling or a, I'm a parent. And the Z's, like I said earlier, they, they call those the doing end result of our purpose. So I think for most of us, our purpose here is to raise consciousness. And really what that means is hold space for as much love as we can, because love is the great transmuter. And it transmutes fear, it transmutes judgment, it transmutes scarcity. So I would say live with love as much as you can. Beautiful. The final question we have, hopefully not the final, Lee. I would absolutely love to do this again I'd with love you. To. This is so fun. Um, this is what I call the time capsule question. Um, we have to travel a bit into time. Um, and it's basically, if I were to give you a time capsule and you can put anything that you would like to put in there, whether that be a book, an audio transmission, a word, a poem, a song, anything that you can imagine, uh, a frequency, whatever it, it could be. 
and you were to put it in this time capsule and the next generation of leaders would open this time capsule between the years of 2030 and 2050, what would you put in that time capsule? It, it would be sound. It would be uh, mm. some kind of angelic frequency choir so that when mm. you play it, it goes right into your body. The beauty of sound and music is it bypasses the mind. It bypasses beliefs. Um, sure, songwriting is a great thing because it lets lyrics open or expand our mind or help our mind identify with things while we're moving this music through our body. But it would be, be some kind of angelic choir so that whoever listened had a, an immersion into that feeling. Mm. Is there a song of yours that's out right now that we can link that, that has angelic choirs? Good question. I don't think we've, well, yeah, maybe we need to do something like that. We actually, I think by the time this interview comes out, our brand new album Timelines will have come out. Um, it comes out December 2nd. And um, there is some light language on one of the tracks called Inside the Soul from the wonderful channeler and a good friend of mine, Wendy Kennedy. Um, Ooh. So, yeah, I don't know. You'd have to go through. Our, there's definitely angelic frequencies in, in, in quite a, a vast number of our, mu our songs. Yeah, I love that. Sound for me has also, as I told you, has unlocked so much. Um, Lee, this has been such a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, we had a little delay in the beginning, <laughs> but thank you for being so flexible, honestly, because people don't get to see the behind the scenes of before recording. You were so generous, flexible, um, came with an open heart, great energy. And, you know, that for me is the best gift that I could get from from a guest is truly seeing you for who you are in, in, in that in that nature. So I really honor you that. make it very easy, Emilio, because that's what you bring. So thank you and lots of love to all your listeners and viewers. I so love brother. Wow. We ended that in 122.11. <laughs> that is crazy. Wow. 